Hey, fellow problem solvers, Colfax, math here. The way you learn how to juggle is practice. The way you learn how to do well on a standardized exam, practice. So I'm here to do that with you today. I have 15 sample problems from the ASVAB military placement exam and mechanical comprehension. You could get more information from this website right here. All right, and let's go ahead and get started. What I'd highly recommend you do is you have a notebook in front of you, kind of jotting down your notes, help them stick and help you remember them. Pause the video, do the problem the best you can, unpause the video and see how I come up with the solution. All right, number one, scalars are A, quantities that have only value, B, quantities that have value and direction, C, quantities that have only direction, points, transformation. So what scalars are, or pause the video, do the best you can, unpause the video. What scalars are is they're in the field of vectors. So a vector has both magnitude and direction, but a scalar has only magnitude. So the correct answer is answer A. They only have a magnitude with no direction. Number two, vectors are quantities that have only value, B, quantities that have value and direction, quantities that have only direction, points transformation. So same series of answers, correct answer this time is gonna be B. So again, a vector shows you both magnitude and direction. It could represent a disease travel or a force with its travel. Um, the way a car is traveling, the way a tank is traveling, or a projectile. A vector has both magnitude and direction, a scalar only the singular magnitude. Number three, which of the following is not a vector quantity? Force, torque, work, acceleration, pause the video, then unpause the video. Correct answer is C, work is not a vector quantity, because it is only a scalar, it is only a mount without direction. If a particle travels in a loop at a speed of three feet per second, which of the following is true? Displacement can be zero. Displacement cannot be zero. The distance can be zero. Distance and displacement both can be zero. Correct answer, A, displacement can be zero. If a particle travels in a loop, it ends at the same point where it started. In such a case, the distance traveled is the length of the loop. The displacement is a straight line distance between its start point and its final point, and that's why it can be zero. Question five, force equals to A, the product of mass and velocity, B, the product of velocity and time, C, the product of mass and acceleration, D, the product of momentum and time. Force equals C, the product of mass and acceleration. Force is equal to mass times acceleration. It is Newton's second law of motion which states force is equal to mass times acceleration. Question six, an astronaut weighs 1,864 Newtons on Earth. The diameter of Earth is six times that of Earth's moon. What's the mass of an astronaut on Earth's moon? Assuming that gravitational acceleration on Earth is 9.8 meters per second squared. Pause the video. Think about it a little bit, work it out, unpause the video, and here's the answer for number six. Correct answer is B, 190 kilograms. To solve this problem, we first need to find the mass of the astronaut on Earth, then understand that mass doesn't change based on location, only weight does. So we're gonna use the formula W is equal to M times G, or M is equal to W over G. For the weight, 1,864 Newtons in gravitational acceleration on Earth 
9.8. So I take that mass, that Newtons, divided by the 9.8 and get 190 kilograms on Earth. That was a pretty hard one. A lot of these are conceptual, and some of them are actually computational, like that one. All right, question seven. A vehicle travels at a constant speed on the highway. It can be said that, A, its acceleration rate is less than zero. B, the net force acting on the vehicle is zero. C, the force applied by the vehicle's drive wheels is greater than the forces that act to slow the vehicle. D, it is accelerating at a constant rate. And pause the video, correct answer is B, the net force acting on the vehicle is zero. When a vehicle travels at a constant speed on the highway, the net force acting on the vehicle is zero. This is because the forces driving the vehicle forward, such as the force from the drive wheels, are perfectly balanced by the forces acting to slow it down, like resistance. As a result, there is no net force and the vehicle maintains constant speed without acceleration or deceleration. Question number eight. The force that resists the relative motion of two surfaces in contact is known as A, normal reaction, drag, C, friction, D, gravity. Correct answer is C, friction. The force that resists relative motion on two surfaces in contact is known as friction. Number nine, what friction prevents an object from moving unless overcome by sufficiently large force? A, moving, B, sliding, C, static, D, rolling friction. Correct answer. Answer C, static friction. Static means no movement. So static friction prevents an object from moving unless overcome by a sufficient large force. It acts between two surfaces that are not in motion relative to each other. Question number 10. What is the type of equilibrium if an object is at rest and is in a state of equilibrium? A, dynamic. B, motive, C, potential, D, static. Pause the video, do the best you can, unpause. Correct answer is D, static. The type of equilibrium when an object is at rest and in a state of equilibrium is static. Static equilibrium occurs when all the forces acting on an object are balanced. Number 11. If you're still here, good job. We only got a few more to go. Stick with me just to kind of get an idea of what some of these problems look like. See how you do on them. Recognize how much more you need to study. Look up some videos on forces. Okay, number 11. In order to hit a baseball so that the ball has greater velocity, the player must A, hit the ball with less force, B, make contact with the ball for a longer period of time, C, apply more torque to the ball, D, hit the ball so that it travels roughly at a 45 degree angle relative to the ground. Correct answer is B, make contact with the ball for a longer period of time. To increase the velocity of a baseball, the batter needs to maximize the force applied over time. A longer contact time allows for greater impulse, which is a product of force and time, which translates to higher velocity of the ball traveling. Number 12, two people are carrying a 100 pound crate on an eight by 12 foot board. The crate should be placed to evenly distribute the load between the two people. Two feet from the end of the board, in the middle of the board, three feet from the end of the board, the load cannot be evenly distributed. All right, correct answer B, the load should be in the middle of the board to evenly distribute the weight 
of the 100 pound crate. I mean, the weight of it's actually not important or the number of people carrying it, but on each side, it needs to be in the center to evenly distribute the weight. Number 13, a force that pushes materials together is known as effort, B, compound, C, resistance, D, compression. Correct answer is D, compression. The force that pushes materials together is known as compression. Compression is a type of force that acts to reduce the size or volume of a material by pressing it together. All right, number 14, we're almost there. The sideways force one feels when a car turns sh sharply is often called A, thrust force, B, angle force, C, centrifugal force, D, positive force. Correct answer, answer C, centrifugal force. Centrifugal force is the apparent force that pushes an object outward when it is moving in a circular path, such as when a car turns sharply. This force actually results of the object's inertia. It tries to continue moving in a straight line while the car is turning. All right, last one right here, number 15. Which one causes an object to travel in a circular path? A, centri centripetal force toward the center, centripetal force outward from the center, centrifugal force toward the center, D, centrifugal force outward from the center. Correct answer, A, centripetal force toward the center. The centripetal force is a force that acts on an object moving in a circular path directed toward the center of the circle. This inward force is what keeps the object moving in a curved path rather than flying off in a straight line due to its inertia. All right, well, well done um, on the video. If you're still here, think about subscribing and sharing this with anybody else you might know who um, is thinking about um, taking the ASVAB exam. Again, the more you study, the more you familiarize yourself with it, the better you're gonna do writing it down in a notebook and taking notes really helps um, stick. All right, well, good luck.